I want to talk about transformation as a quality of brave space, as a principle of brave space, a space where we can take the risk of being vulnerable. And so there's like in every <laughs> tradition uh, around spirit or around personal change, transformation, there's this sense that everything changes. The constant in life is change, right? How many times have you heard that? I'm sure this isn't the first. So movement makes this really apparent, right? Even the breath is always moving. There's always motion. And so the change in form, the transformation, is, is constantly happening. And we can break that down into uh, phrases, into phrasing. And so phrasing breaks down flow, and flow is the ongoingness. Flow is the river of experience, of existence, of time. And so we can break that down into parts. This is a phrase right here, this sentence that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And so every breath, every movement, every everything has phrasing, every life, right? Birth, life, death. So there's all these phrases within phrases. And then we go spiritual when we look at what's bigger than the phrase of one life. Like that's one way I like to think of the definition of, of a spiritual perspective is that it's bigger than just my lifetime. There's a lot more to that. That's a way oversimplified idea, but it's kind of fun and useful too. So transformation happens in this kind of phrasing, that it's the change of form from one point to an another. And so in comes this idea that's so big these days and uh, important, which is trauma. And trauma has this sense that we like don't resolve the phrase, right? Something happens to us, we're affected, and then we're stuck in a pattern because everything happens in patterns. So just walking, I walk my way, right? Like if you were up here walking, you'd walk just slightly differently. We'd know it even if we didn't know you. We could see you kind of in the darkness and not see your face and then watch like five different people walk. We'd know which one was you. We can see these patterns of how we move in others and we repeat the same patterns. Like you've probably seen me do the same movement. If you rewind the video, you'll see me do the same gestures over and over because we are made of patterns. And as the patterns repeat, they create our form. Like my posture is a certain way because of the patterns I move in. It also affects the patterns I move in, right? The form affects the patterns and the patterns create the form. Some it's like the river analogy. If we have a river in a canyon, the canyon holds the river and the river slices and creates the canyon over time. So the body, the form, is created by the patterns the flow that's happening there, and the flow creates the form. I may have just repeated the same thing there. Flow creates form, form creates the flow, holds the flow. So trauma, something happens, you know, whether it's psychological, physical, there's trauma with a big T, like the big traumas, and there's like the little ones, which are usually the ones we're actually talking about. Um, depends who you are, but everyone's talking about trauma these days. It doesn't matter in the sake that it, in the sense that it's all patterns. So certainly it matters what happens to us personally, but in terms of considering how we deal with it at a body level and why transformation would be a principle of an embodied space and creating a sense we can be vulnerable, it's this idea that we're all patterns. And then when we are working with our patterns, then there's the ability to notice them. So I can notice my breath. I can notice the shift of weight on my feet. I can notice if I tense up in a certain place. Like 
right there. I can feel talking to you like I tense up a little bit there. It's all right. It's one of my patterns. I can check in there and then go, oh, I'm going to relax that or I'm going to come the closest I can and interrupt the pattern. So the phrases of noticing, the, t the way we parse it and choose a piece we can bite off to notice, you know, oh, this breath, oh, this day, here's how I'm going to treat this moment. So we can come more and more into the current moment, into the present moment, and notice the phrases we're in and make choices about that through the noticing. And that's the power of a somatic viewpoint of working with the body, is this ability to notice and break down what's happening. Because most of these things are happening automatically. Like when I walk, I'm not thinking about how I shift my weight. I'm just doing it. Now, if I think about it, I slow down, and I can really sense each moment. Larger movement, I'm kind of following my movement right now. I don't know what I'm going to do next. And improvisation is a really neat play of noticing our patterns, because we're always doing things that we've kind of done before in some, some way. And so improvisation, we really get to play with that. And so the vulnerability comes in being willing to notice, being willing to engage with the patterns. And it's, I, I, I kind of think it's universally a bit uncomfortable. Now, there are parts of what's uncomfortable that can be fun. It's not like it's painful or just kind of curious to play in what's uncomfortable. And so in working with transformation as a principle, it's coming in with the willingness to notice and be a little uncomfortable in the face of interrupting patterns, challenging patterns, noticing, noticing the patterns. And um, that sets up a different kind of group field, a different way of being together. And, and that's why de-shaming came as a principle before this one, because it's so essential to not be shaming ourselves for the patterns that may feel suboptimal or, I don't know, I just always get embarrassed to see my own patterns, like watching this video will be challenging for me. That's okay. It's just part of what it is. It's, it's, it's where the discomfort is, and there's so much power in being willing to be uncomfortable because then we have the possibility of change, of the change in the form once we're aware of the patterns and then can kind of interrupt or suspend certain patterns and not like, oh, I want to do this, but I'm going to not for now, then, which doesn't necessarily always mean holding the breath. <laughs> Probably not. Um, and then, uh, then change happens.